This is one of these products where if you don't know about it, you don't know you need it. You don't know you need it. it. And you need it. And you That's need it from Grayson Hobby. Links below. Because we all need two different frequencies. Yeah. Just like we all need five planes or six quads or. Before we begin this video, we've talked about it. It's impossible to do a cool video of a receiver with new technology, with technology that hasn't been released. It's something out there that's to be, to, to be determined. So we're going to sort of do like a talking head podcast kind of style video. Yeah, there's a lot of information on this, guys. I know I am always someone that says read the manual, but in this case, you're going to have to read the descriptions on this stuff because there's a lot of different things it does. But we're going to go over a general overall what it is. Yeah. Okay. And now I'm going to ask the dumb questions because I know nothing about this. So here it is. This is a nano ELRS module. This is the Nomad module. This is a Gemini crossband. So you have regular ELRS, you have Gemini, which came out that there's not a lot on the market for Gemini. Um, beta FPV, I think happy model. Up until now, Radio Master had no input on the Gemini platform. Okay, interesting. Um, so this is Radio Master saying, Gemini is a great idea. Let's take it one step further. So this has the crossband capability, which is new on the market. Um, I believe this might actually be the first crossband production model of anything. Um, so explain what crossband is. Crossband is 2.4 gigahertz and 900 megahertz or 915 at the same time. So, so sub gigahertz and 2.4. Two at the same time going to the same receiver. Yes. So. So with a compatible receiver, which is in this case, the DBR4, if you see here, you'll see there is a 900 megahertz antenna, a 2.4 antenna, another 900 megahertz, megahertz antenna, and another 2.4 antenna. That's four antennas on the sucker. Four antennas, so. And they each are actively uh, being a receiver. So there's four individual receivers. Ugh, so if you're flying out. upside down through buildings, you have all sorts of yeah, well, this opens up. So you got guys that are flying the bandos and all that with the drones. Mm -hmm. You got a lot of um, RF blocking environment and stuff like that. So the 900 megahertz can do better. The racers want 2.4 gigahertz because it's lower latency. It's okay. faster. All right. Um, so you're getting the best of both worlds. You can take one, in this case, a drone receiver, the DBR4. You can take it, put it on one drone, and now you have the ability to run the Gemini crossband, and it can do the best of both, depending on what mode you set on the radio or the function. Um, Gemini is essentially the Swiss Army knife of ELRS, okay. in a way. Uh, it does everything. It You can run it as a standard 2.4, you can run it as a 900 megahertz, or you can run the Gemini crossband and do both. Or you can run it as a Gemini 2.4 or a Gemini 900. So it has the ability to do a little bit of everything. And you change the frequency through the radio, actually. Yeah, you'll use your ELRS Lewis script. We'll do more about that later. But yeah, yeah so that's how you change it. Because that's the first question I asked Will was how do you how do you change it? And he was showing me the menu. So yeah, so it's just a really robust system. And the price point on this is literally. I think it's ten dollars more than a standard 2.4. We or think it's a mistake. That's how low it is. Yeah, like I saw it. I was like. That's, we think that's a lot of thing. stuff going on for yeah. the price. So I don't want to throw the price out there at this moment, but it's very competitively priced with other Gemini systems and other just regular ELRS systems. As but always, we'll, the link will be in the description below for inventory, for product purchase, and for yeah, the price. Full detail specs about the Nomad mo module, its capabilities, stuff like that, that will have, we'll put on the product page on our website at graysonavi.com. Um, as far as the future proofing of this thing, it is going to be running ELRS 3.5, which is not technically out yet. There is a release candidate as of today. We're doing this a couple days before the release of this. Um, however, there's going to be new modes that are never before seen in the ELRS market. So this is going to be really cool. Um, this is a lot of future proofing in a way maybe yeah, i guess you'd say that is. but this is the next generation of elrs and it's going to give really good results because i think they did it right yeah. i mean they radio master works with the elrs developers yeah so. so the receiver how much does this guy weigh that receiver it you, weighs you got the specs it weighs <laughs> the receiver weighs 5.3 grams with the antennas that's Really light. The and biggest thing is running the wires to everything. And it's a 20 millimeter? 20 by 20, 20 volt by pattern. 20. It yeah. does come with the little uh, gummies, the soft mounts. Um, well, we're going to throw that elephant in the room. Tell me why you don't like the size. 
So a lot of the drones that I was going to put this on are 30 by 30 hole pattern. So I didn't really have a drone to put this receiver on at the moment. Because this um, is made for long distance. Yeah, or well, my speed controls are 30 by 30, and yeah. I'm going to have to print adapters. But guess what? I don't have the height on my flight stacks. So in this case, we're not doing a review with it on a drone yet because I'm going to have to find something to mount it on. Right. Um, there was a company that used to be around, yeah. maybe around still, that did a some kind of a plate. Oh, what are we going to call yeah. it? Yeah, so Radio Master, I'm sure you're watching these reviews. Uh, do a 30 by 30 adapter plate or three, uh, print it to where you can break off a 30 by 30 hole pattern. Would be amazing for this receiver, and it would fit everybody's builds a lot better. So that's my one piece of advice on a new product. Yeah. Um, all right, who is this product for? So this... Not for me, that's for sure. The Nomad <laughs> system, I'm going to say, is... At this point in time, not for everyone. It is for someone that's already read enough about ELRS or wants to know about ELRS. If yeah. you are someone that's just, let me just plug and go, um, or the idea of ELRS is kind of confusing, I think just stick with the regular ELRS module if you're gonna get into ELRS at this point in time. Three months from now, who knows? That could be a completely different answer. Yeah. Um, but as of right now, with this early release of the Nomad, it's an awesome idea. I can't wait to throw it on the planes and stuff like that. However, there is a couple, not issues, but settings that you have to be aware of. And that's why I'm saying for someone that's already dealt with ELRS, maybe dabbled in Gemini with the beta modules and all that, um, this is a great idea because you can do so much more with it and you get that so much extra capability. But if you're flying planes, there's only one receiver right now that does this. Right. So, so that's kind of pointless. We'll, we'll get into this later in maybe another video, but it doesn't come with the servo ports like a PWP. Uh, P no, it's just an RXTX pinout. Yeah, so you'd so have it's to just a, you, solder you it up to a different... Like a flight controller or something yeah. like that. So if you have a plane with a flight controller, better. For yeah. so, so I think there's definitely capability, or if you're doing long-range FPV drones, this is a great idea system because it gives you the best of both worlds. Right. And the, the physical idea of having essentially four signals sent, four possibilities of getting that link every time. And I believe the receiver, the DBR4, has a 100 milliwatt telemetry. That's a big thing. A lot of the receivers are 10 milliwatt, so this has a much stronger telemetry link as well. Um, wattage, what is the, what is this run at? So this is a one watt system. One watt system. That's So both the 900 and the 2.4, so you're not gonna get more wattage than you would out of a regular module, but you have the ability of doing the cross yeah. That's That's where it's at. All right. Looks looking at the paperwork here. This does run 866, 868 for those who are running the European stuff. It's probably a different module. It's probably a different firmware. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Ours is on 915. Right. So for those who are watching who are, I guess, European. Yeah. This Just sub gigahertz. We'll just call it that. Yeah. So it does run. In the megahertz. It does have the capability of running 868. Just want to make sure we, yeah. we mention that. Anything else? We talked about the great stuff. I'm gonna put Will on the spot here. What are the negatives of this? If, if you can think of anything. Right? Yes, there is one negative offhand, and this is why I say I don't recommend it for someone with zero ELRS experience. Okay. What you do it? have to go into the menu settings. Um, most of my planes, for example, are gonna be running the ER8 or the uh, Beta FPV Super uh, P receiver. Um, these, one of them, the Super P is a Gemini receiver, so I can run Gemini mode. The ER8 is not a Gemini receiver. So if I turn, if I leave this in Gemini mode, I'm actually getting a dirty environment. It's sending a 40 megahertz offset packet on 2.4 um, to the receiver. So you're just creating a noisy environment on yourself on the frequency you're using. So that would be bad. You would run it, want to run it as a single antenna mode or a switch mode on there. And there is multiple mo modes to choose from, and we'll do a quick overlay or something like that with that. Uh, to show you an idea, but you have to know that. If you don't know that, you're actually making your ELRS performance possibly worse. Not saying that you'll have a problem, but it would just be a noisier environment that you're creating for yourself. Okay. Earlier, when we were first discussing this, you mentioned something about different pockets. Did we, did we go over that? Packets. Packets. Did you talk about that? The packets of data. So... Is it like the 10 offset? You just mentioned it now, but I don't think we kind of went over that in detail. The ELRS, the Gemini is sending multiple packets offset. So... Gemini over regular ELS is sending in 2.4 gigahertz, it's sending a 40, uh, 40 gigahertz 
or 40 megahertz, something like that. Um, it's sending an offset packet to the receiver. So you get two different receivers, live link, actively linking and seeing one, say this channel and then one slightly offset frequency that it's receiving and that's doing it both at the same time. So they're, your chances of getting possibly a noisy environment blocking some of that signal would be passed through on the other receiver. So it gives you double the, the capability of like a, I think they call it like deja vu or something like that um, on the diversity is what they're calling it. Okay. Um, so that's Gemini. When you do cross band, you're doing that on the 2.4 gigahertz band and the 900 or sub gigahertz band as well. So that gives the ability of possibly four, four yeah. packets being sent. So, so your reliability is going to be yeah. potentially a lot better. Yeah. So that's, that's really cool. That's it's a, the ultimate ELRS yeah. link right. at this point. That's the pr pretty much the best you're going to do. And the receivers going forward in 3.5 that hasn't come out yet in the software will have super low latency and 900 megahertz as well. Um, a mode that's more catered to Mavlink that sends multiple packets for, uh, to, for the telemetry data and all that, as well as more catered modes to different styles of flying. Okay. Is there that big of a problem out there right now where people are losing signal that we have to have this crazy redundancy? I have, I mean, yes, you hear some brownouts every once in a while. There is certain environments um, I, I, I have I, had people have, say they have issues. Well, um, I guess like flight tests, right? They have hundreds and hundreds of pilots. Would that help out or that, you know, but there's all airplanes. A big event, it might. Yeah. It might because you're actively switching multiple channels. So you have redundancy is the name of the game on this one. Yeah. Um, but you're having redundancy as well as two frequency bands. So your, your reliability is going up in two different ways. You have redundancy and spread spectrum in the fact that you're dealing with highs and lows in the spectrum of frequency for, for reliability huh. and possibly distance because 900 megahertz usually gets better. This is very cool. I love it. But this is more bleeding edge technology. This is really bleeding edge for a problem I don't know that's out there right yet. I don't know. Well, you got to create the problems that have solutions. <laughs> I see. I see the customer support emails, and I never, never said, I, well, at least not a repetitive email. Hey, I lost signal. Hey, I lost signal. So I think this is a. If you don't have an ELRS module at this point, and you're looking to get into ELRS, say you have a Radio Master TX16 four and one. I want to try ELRS down the road. We actually had a customer earlier today mention, I want to try ELRS. Something like this module right here, the Nomad module would be a great purchase because it's only a couple bucks more than a regular ELS module, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it has the ability to do extra with it. So say you're flying somewhere and you're just having 2.4 issues all day long. Mm -hmm. You could run the 900 megahertz okay, okay. receiver. Um, that, now that, that makes sense. That happens to or, me. Or you accidentally bought the wrong ELRS receiver because you didn't know better. Well, guess what? Now you can run one or, or the other. Or you flash <laughs> the wrong, or you flash the wrong, wrong firmware, right? Well, the firmware is, it's, you still have a dedicated 2.4 receiver and dedicated 900 okay. megahertz. So you, that's you 866. That's yeah. 868. 868, yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, any other questions? Any other things you want to add? Jacob, so, wait, anything we missed? Audience in the background? Uh, we're going to show you guys. This is just, oop, Express that, LRS. That light's right there. Just keep it right there. All right. So I'm going to show you guys just a kind of an overview. And again, this is not the full 3.5 firmware. So this is on 343. Um, there are more modes going to be added to this. So you can see your packet rates in the 2.4 gigahertz band. You have your most of your normal options here. And then switching over the 900 megahertz low band, you have 50, 100, 100 full, 200 low, 200 full, 250. And now we have the cross band. So you have 100 megahertz full, resolution capable, 150. So with like the full, you can go to switch mode and you have eight channel, 16 channel, half rate, 12 channel mixed. And those are the different options and obviously back to the eight channel. Now this is the antenna mode I was talking about. So Gemini is both active with the frequency offset mm -hmm. outputs. Mm -hmm. That's only if you have a Gemini or crossband receiver. If you're running a regular ELRS receiver, you do not want to run Gemini. You want to run either Antenna 1, Antenna 2, or Switch Mode. Mm -hmm. So that's 
where it's going to mess people up if they don't know this. Okay. Granted, if you go on ELRS's website, read about it. It's 10 tabs kind of thing. 10 tabs. Do a little bit of reading. Reading? On the toilet. I don't know. Grab your phone. Have at it. Does, is, there a, <laughs> is, is there a TikTok on this? There's YouTube videos, tutorials, and all that, too. There's all a right. lot of ELRS tutorials out there. But if you don't know this stuff, it could cause issues. Let's see. This is model match. So that's a, that's a standard ELRS setting. Mm -hmm. TX power. Let's see what this thing can do. Down to 10 milliwatt, 25, 50, 100, 250, 500, and 1,000. You have dynamic for the fan. The fan can be adjusted different things. BTX administrator, Wi-Fi connectivity, backpack option. And that's for like your goggles and stuff like that if you can run a different module. Um, Bluetooth joystick so you can run wireless to your computer kind of thing as a Bluetooth uh, bind mode. And let's go here. Let's While we got it, let's go ahead and power up this receiver. I'm just running something here for power. Got our receiver on. Move this up a little bit. What are we showing here? Uh, I just want to see if I'm in. Okay, I'm in crossband mode, and you'll see the antennas lit up here. Currently, we are actively on 2.4 antennas. Is that your finger? Yeah. So the red are lit up. And you'll see if I switch it over oh boy. Okay. to low band, it should switch up. Yeah. So we're on the 900 antennas. Okay, so the LEDs. That's because we're so close. Yeah, I'm flooding it. The L, L, the, yeah. So, sorry. LEDs are flashing for the thing they're on. LEDs will dictate yeah. what frequency you're on. Okay. So you got crossband. It's natively doing 2.4. And as you go out and, I guess, lose 2.4 signal, or if it has to switch over, you'll see it light up the 900 megahertz. But that's what the active antennas are seeing. Um, now, while we're on that, I'm going to go to other devices. See what we have inside the menu here. So you see crosshair. That's it has different capabilities for different protocols depending on what you're running. So S bus, so you can run out to the old S bus receivers and all. Inverted crossfire, crossfire depending on how you wire it up. So receiver mode, you have diversity. So that's just regular diversity, Gemini mode if you want that. So it has the ability to change that. Telemetry lost. RF signal critical. Probably just switched it so. <laughs> Telemetry power. Down to 10 milliwatt, 25, 50, 100 milliwatt. And then that's match TX. That has the ability. So if you're running dynamic and it's at 10 milliwatt, it'll run the receiver at 10 milliwatts to match up to its max of 100 milliwatt, okay. which in theory keeps it from overheating if you got one that gets hot. Um, and more battery efficient, but Telemetry how little is it using? Covered. Fine storage, Telemetry. persistent, or volatile. That's um, how you want storing the bind procedure and all that, which that's regular ELRS stuff there. Um, model ID. If you do have model match, and then that's just telling me I'm on 4.3. I'm sorry, 3.4.3 as well. So 3.5 doesn't exist yet. There is an RC candidate available for it. Okay, yeah. Go. Yeah. You're good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know. So there is an RC candidate available for it, but as of this video here, we are running it with the factory included firmware. Um, I would imagine by the time this product is being produced and shipped to customers, it probably will ship with 3.5 already on it. All right. I think that's it. I think we covered everything. So hopefully, guys, hopefully this wasn't too confusing. This is just a brand new product, and we definitely got it in hand. We want to show you guys because this is potentially the future of ELRS. Um, assuming everything goes good firmware-wise and all that, this all right. is amazing. Um, but definitely keep your eyes out on it. If you're interested in ELRS, if you want to get an ELRS module, I would definitely, definitely, definitely take a look at the Nomad module, especially given its price point. Yep. Shout out to Radio Master for giving us this product for free for review. Grayson Hobby will have this available in store and online uh, once they become available. Yeah. And